Today we're going to be taking a look at the M-Connect product from Mertron. This is a fairly new product, uh, only available in the last nine months or so, and I've been testing it since it was released. I have a fairly detailed article uh, on the website, and I will link that in the description below if you want to check out more screens, more details, and more analysis, I'd suggest heading over there. So we're going to take a look at the high-level hardware, jump into some of the software, uh, and some of the pros and cons uh, before we uh, wrap up. So the hardware itself is a box that you connect into your NMEA 2000 network, and then into your Wi-Fi or Ethernet network, and it provides a web server that will allow you to see all of that data on those networks and be able to manipulate it, display it in different ways, uh, and interact with it. It's actually a pretty easy product to install. It's got two connections for NEMA 2000 networks. I'm using one here, power connector, and then Ethernet. Once it powers up, you're able to connect into it. Uh, there's a bunch of demo screens and data available, and then start customizing away. That's where this product gets interesting. So let's go ahead and flip over to the real product. So this is my connect uh, connected into my network itself. And this is my custom home screen that I've put together for my boat. You can see you can upload pictures and graphics. I've got my boat in the middle and then various different bits of data around the outside edges uh, that I like to see at the, at the home page. So each of these are components and you can change those and we'll go into that here in a couple of minutes. Um, by default, it comes with a bunch of different screens. You can use those and customize those or you can create your own from scratch. This particular one, I think I deleted the background, added my own, deleted a lot of the data that was on here and put in uh, what I wanted to see. Here's another example of a win screen. This um, is pretty standard. I think I deleted a couple of things uh, added a graph and, and did stuff like that. So you can see it's pretty responsive. I've used it on laptops, mobile devices, tablets. It scales really well, works really well, um, and is very responsive and very quick. Usually you'll see, um, you know, near real-time updates to wind and other sensitive data like that. So that's pretty great uh, from that perspective. You can go take a look at another screen. This is my tank screen. You can set different ranges for alerts and alarms. Uh, you can choose different types of components. You can see I'm using tanks and percentages. I've also got a roll or inclinometer uh, here so that I know uh, what uh, the balance of the boat is when I'm filling tanks. So quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to how you lay things out. You can create as many or as few screens as you want. There's some um, idiosyncrasies, you have to create the navigation yourself. Uh, there, there are some navigate, there's one navigation to control that will allow you to have multiple um, choices, but it's not, um, not very intuitive. So again, this is a fairly new product and there are some rough edges, uh, but uh, you can lay it out how you would like, uh, and, and set it up, you know, to show the data that you're interested in. A feature that was released uh, in the newest release is the ability to include a web page. And so on this particular uh, screen, I have a bunch of data for my AC power side uh, being shown. And then on the right-hand side, I have the Victron Servo um, that I have on board. And I'm using the MFD Display um, UI, which if you don't know that that exists, it's a great little tool to be able to use. And I've included that here so that I can see you know, real-time stats from my power system and I can look at temperatures and other things like that. So that's great to be able to include a web page. Uh, you'll notice here, one of the things is the space between all these controls over here on the left, um, or components on the left, they're not all equal or even, and you can see the house bank got cut off. That's part of, um, again, those rough edges, the editor and the way that you do this uh, can be a little finicky to get it all right, so. So you've seen a few screens. Let's go ahead and jump into the settings menu. Um, we'll go through a couple of these. Um, in the main settings, it's there's some basic settings. There's also a night mode, which I find not to be very useful at all. It really just puts um, a color in front of everything. So the boat's still white. It's still bright. Um, some of these colors are still pretty bright. So I kind of wish they had taken a different approach there. Um, 
it's nice to have it, I suppose, but most products re-render each of these objects into night colors. Um, uh, so I'm not sure that that's really gonna work well for folks. Um, also within the settings menu, we've got diagnostics. You can look at your devices, you can change screens. Um, the VPN is, is, is quite nice, and I'm not gonna click into this because it has some personal information in it, but they have chosen to use Tailscale. Um, which is a, a commercial product um, that allows you to VPN into the M Connect, and I really appreciate they've done that instead of tried to build something themselves. Um, I wrote an article on remotely accessing your boat, and Tailscale was one of them that I recommended. So you can check that out if you go to the main article and click through to that. And essentially, what it does is that you can um, click a few things within the M Connect get the tail scale configuration, um, create yourself a tail scale account. Uh, here I've downloaded the tail scale app for my iPhone, and then I can get the information on that M connect and open up a web browser, even if I happen to be off the boat and interact with the M connect uh, as if I were on the boat. It works extremely well. It's very fast and snappy. Of course, it depends on your network connection if you're on a really terrible cellular link, it's not going to work as quickly as if you've got a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, but I'm very, very happy that Maritron has chosen not to try to build something of their own. When marine vendors try to do networking, it usually results in a shitty experience. And they just need to focus on doing marine stuff and then use open source or commercial products like this because they're far more robust and it's super easy to do it. Uh, and I'm really glad they chose to do that here. What you're probably interested in, in uh, most is how do you edit a screen? And so that's done here. Um, and you can see the screen, uh, the main home screen here. Uh, you can edit configurations. You can edit different screens. So these are the different screens that we kind of cycled through. And then, as I mentioned, each of these things on this screen is a component, right? So if we go over to tanks, these are a tank component, right? So I could use a gauge if I don't want a tank um, representation. I can use digital. Um, looks like there's quite a bit of options in here. I can do a line graph if I want to get super boring. I don't think my fuel tank is going to drain that quickly. Uh, but each of these has different parameters and different settings. So it does take some time to learn what's available and, and what, you can, um, what you can set. Uh, but for instance, you can choose the units, of course, liters, imperial gallons, um, the type of fuel, um, or I'm sorry, the type of fluid, and then you can set ranges. Um, so if I go over to one that I already set, you can set uh, high and low and center ranges, and that will drive alerts, which we'll look at in a minute. So a lot of flexibility um, in terms of just the parameters that you can select as well as how it's being displayed. So if we go over here, we're going to discard that and go back in to say this battery voltage one. Um, you can see inside all of the parameters, there's tons of other things that are supported from, you know, utility voltage to generators to water makers. There is a full list. There's quite a good manual, a full list of what they support, um, as well as there is a documentation, a link for documentation right in the product doesn't really give you a lot of information on some of them. Uh, it gives you the, the PGN for NEMA 2000, um, but it is uh, pretty, uh, pretty detailed in, in some cases in terms of how you're supposed to use components. It can be helpful to kind of refer to that. So a lot of, a lot of flexibility in the configuration uh, for each of the components. And again, it will take you some time to learn which component is best for what, um, but there's lots of choices, right? From gauges to clusters to bar graphs to all sorts of things. So you can really, really get um, detailed in terms of how you want things to, dis to be displayed. The product also supports uh, Mertron's M-Power lighting system. I don't have that on board, but you can do switch groups and all sorts of other things that are associated with that. And then there's a conditions and action function. It is pretty basic. It allows you to drive a high or low condition on various different things and then drive um, specific actions like changing a screen, resetting a timer, or turning a breaker on and off. Very basic, but I'm hoping maybe we'll see some additional advances here over time.
So that's kind of how you configure it. Let's go ahead and look at some demo data so you can see some alarms. So we're going to go in here to settings. We'll say use demo data, settings, configuration, and down to the default configuration. So now we're looking at demo data and you'll see a couple of these navigation um, buttons have this little um, marker and that is an alarm. So we can see our engines have now two alarms, one red and one yellow. And then you can see that these components are what are alarming. That's the the depth of alarms right now. There's no there's nothing other than the visual alarm in the screens. There's no email notifications, no push notifications. It does not turn a siren or enunciator on. So that is kind of a big missing component for this product. Um, it does seem like they're going to add it, but I can't get anyone to confirm that. Uh, so uh, it's great that you can see that there's a problem, but if you have to be on the boat and you have to be looking at this in order to notice it, you will not get notified in any other way. So uh, this demo data also is a good, op a good opportunity to look at things like lighting. So you can drive changes on an image when you turn on and off lights. It does require a bit of patience to set all this up. Um, you can see different approaches here which are kind of cool. Uh, and then if we go back to that and go to, I think it's, yeah, so there's a breaker panels that you can see there um, that, that show that. And then of course we were already in the engines data, but there's a bunch of different displays that they have in here as examples. So if you had um, maybe an outboard focus boat, you could, you could show something that way. Here's a very data-driven version of it, which I kind of like. I like the little dots moving up and down. Uh, that one is super data-driven. Uh, and then I think there's one with some outboards on it in here as well. Um, but lots and lots of different ways to display the data. Um, it, it Again, it can be a little overwhelming to try to figure out which one is right. But it you know the fact that you have that option is pretty cool to be able to, to jump into that. Um, I have uh, a bunch of examples myself of things that I created. Uh, and then, of course, I have examples of some of the stuff that Maritron had in there. There's one with the outboards. You can kind of see them there. So that is the Maritron M Connect product in a nutshell. There's a lot more details in the article. Um, and, of course, if you have questions, please post them here in the video or over in the forums that are attached to the article. Overall, it's a good start. Um, it's a new product. Again, it's only been out for about nine months. It's got some rough edges, some things that, that need some refinement. There are bugs in different places as well. If you are not a DIYer and you want to have something that can display this kind of data on your boat, um, this is compatible with MFDs. So if you have one of the major uh, chart plotters or multifunction displays and you plug this in, the screens that you create will show up on there as well. It can work with camera systems. It can work with power systems. There's a whole list of, of things that, that it's uh, compatible with. So it's got a lot of flexibility. Um, it's still new. It's got some stability issues. Um, and if you don't want to build your own using Signal K or something like that, then this may be a great option for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Go check the article out on the website. And thanks for watching.